Okay, I just want to talk a little bit about this idea of design geometry and taking your brand identifier. And you know how we talked about, um, well, we talked about it and we also heard Michael Beirut talk about how your brand identifier is the first word in the sentence. So we think about this conversation that happens between the brand and your target, um, your target audience, your target user. So that conversation the brand identity is the first word in the sentence. And it's like a first impression. You have to get it right. It has to be perfect. So I'm just going to look at some ideas around, you know, working out the details, which include this kind of geometry that forms the basis for your mark. So just some ideas around that. So thinking a little bit about this Nike logo, this, um, uh, the Nike symbol. And, you know, it has this ideas behind it. And it's, you know, this narrative but the symbol itself has its geometry to it that um, is perfect. So typically we create this using a grid. So um, it forms this underlying structure um, that keeps the mark succinct and rational, so it makes sense. right? So the spaces, the curves, all the lines equal, equal size, um, it's just going to feel like it's right. And you know, sometimes these grids are really rigorous, so they come in different forms, uh, you know, to serve the purpose of the, um, of the mark. Uh, so like this one is much more um, free. So obviously loose, uh, you want to keep all the feathers equal, but you know, just using shapes that fit the purpose of, of whatever shape you're uh, trying to create. Whereas here, we're starting with this really rigorous grid that forms the basis for um, how, this, how all the lines fit together. Um, sometimes, as a designer, I've done this too, used a ratio, like this perfect uh, golden ratio, so 1 to 1.618. Um, it can help like achieve this perfect harmony with with the proportions in the mark. Uh, so we see that here in Saul Bass's um, Girl Scouts Girl Scouts logo. Uh, you know, the golden section forms the basis for the proportions, but then he made this adjustment too. So the black areas are larger than the white areas because white optically expands, and so you know, optically enlarging them so they feel right. And that only comes through like iteration, like making multiple versions of it and trying to enlarge them, uh, putting them in front of people and getting feedback. And again, you know, sometimes the grid is very loose and sometimes it's very rigorous. And sometimes it's, you know, sometimes it's just uh, trying to find ways to really simplify and rationalize what you've what you've made. Uh, another thing that the grid will help you do is establish this relationship between the mark and the typography. So uh, if we look at this here, you can see here that this width is equal to this space. And uh, by doing that, um, you know, again, it makes it feel very rational um, and it always fits together and um, it is easy to put that together when you need it. So if you need another relationship, if you need to build another way that things fit together, um, you can duplicate it and it starts to feel like they all fit together. So the other thing it can help with is making this um, making the like establishing the space around around the lockup. So whichever lockup or mark that you use, the grid can help to establish what the space is and again keep it consistent. And this clear space is really important because um, it is 
uh, what will make the applications consistent. So you, you, you're gonna put this in your brand standards that this mark cannot be any closer to other elements than this space. So if you have a photograph, it can't be closer than this. If you have, you know, the edge of a edge of a field, like if you put it onto the cover of a folder, you've got to leave this space around it. Um, very important. Um, and you and you always find this space uh, based on a proportion inside the mark. And that is that that makes it possible to to, to figure it out. Uh, you know if you're you know, if you're applying it to a sticker or a, or a uniform, uh, you can always figure out um, what space it needs around it. And the other place where you use it is when you are putting it together with another brand identity. So if you have a like a sponsor, so for your festival you have sponsors, and you have to establish the relationship between the festival identity and the sponsors. So the co-branding. Uh, we already talked briefly about lockups, but when you build a lockup, you're going to be building a lockup again based on your grid. Uh, you'll do a vertical one, so with the symbol on the top and you and the word below and your tagline, and you'll do a horizontal one with the symbol and the name and the tagline, and then you'll do one horizontal one without the tagline. Um, you can also it's also worth doing a couple more versions that are for different applications, where instead of being centered, it's, um, it's vertical aligned left. So depending on what you do, you know, you're all doing different, different identities. You're gonna need at least three, at least three different um, orientations. Uh, the other thing you need to really think about is how you're gonna treat this brand mark when it gets smaller and larger. So if you do have uh, a lockup that's fairly complex, when it's larger, when it's smaller, you'll have to do something simpler. So when you make your favicon, this will have to be very simple and you'll have to work this out. You need a very tiny favicon, so 16 by 16 pixels uh, worked out um, so that you have that application, but then maybe something that tells a more eloquent story when it's larger. Uh, you'll be working on the colors, so you'll do a color version. This is the most important one, a black version, a reversed version, and then a, another version that is uh, on color or on a photo. It's really important that you have, you're able to do all these different things with your marks. So a black version, reversed, color, and on a photo. So again, when we're looking at this brand mark where again we're thinking about that last word in the sentence and I want to show you one example that I worked on um, a few years ago so we were doing this identity for compass and I didn't work directly on developing the mark itself I worked on some of the concepting around it but when the designer came to me and gave me this one that she felt was final I immediately took a took a look at it and I realized that the geometry wasn't right and um, if you look at it closely, you'll realize why that it looks like the sea is sinking. And um, so immediately had this like, like discussion around it about what we should do to fix this because, um, you know, if you look at it at this size, it's like, well, you don't really notice it. Um, you know, if you have a real eye for it, you will, but... Uh, <clears throat> As soon as it's larger, it becomes a lot more apparent that the C is not sitting in the center of the pointer mark. And so did a little bit of a study on it. So looking here at the, at the grid lines that we established, we could see that um, if we took this perfect space around the C, that it wasn't lined up with the top. And so we realigned it so it would sit in the center and we also had to look at a couple other things too. So I'm gonna go back to this original one. And that is this mark had some inconsistencies here where this, the designer had drawn this, um, 
this triangle and had not aligned the edge of the the edge of the triangle with the tangent of the circle and so we had to fix that too so started off with this realigned it here with the center and then had to fix the pointer and you know what again these changes feel minute when you look at it um, this way but uh, this mark was actually very large in some places and so on the side of a wall enlarged really large it's it becomes really clear that there's something off and the difference between the two becomes more apparent so um, sometimes these details feel um, these feel why are we bothering with this who cares who's going to notice and you know it's a matter of really forming that one word carefully you really only have that one chance to form that word perfectly and get it just right so the last thing i want you to do is i want you to take a look at this case study that i posted to the content folder and it's about pentagram's work on the slack um, brand identity so take a look at that and then um, take a look at the uh, list of um, uh, deliverables that I want you to work on for next week. So when we come together, we can look at those as well. All right. So let me know if you have any questions. And thanks for listening.